Good morning, welcome to Chaotic Crochet Chatter. My name is Jenny. I am a visually impaired crocheter living in North Yorkshire in the UK. I live with my husband Kelvin, our son Ned and our cat Neris. This is my little corner of the internet where I tell you all about all the things I've been making over the past couple of weeks and anything else that takes my fancy. Alright, enjoy! <laughs> Hello, how are you? It is just after half past nine. It is Thursday, the 29th of February. February, that's a really hard word to say. Um, it's a leap year, of course. We have an extra day. Woohoo! <laughs> um, those who have been here before will notice this is not my usual recording day. Um, I usually record on a Wednesday these days, but I have been quite ill this week and Ned has also been unwell and was off school yesterday. So between me feeling like death warmed up and Ned being around all day, it just wasn't practical to record, so I am doing it today instead. Um, this does mean that this might get published a little later than usual. I'm hoping to still get it out on Friday for you. It might be the evening rather than first thing. We shall see. Whatever time it is, I've clearly managed it because you're watching this now. <laughs> um, first order of business. I have new subscribers. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me for hitting that button. I really, really appreciate it. Every single one of you. Um, now to a lot of people, this isn't gonna sound like a big number, but it's a milestone for me. It's the first milestone I've hit with this channel. I have 10 subscribers now. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so much. And I want to celebrate, you know? It, maybe a small milestone but it is still a milestone and I want to celebrate it so I'm going to do a little giveaway um now what did I say I was gonna make the word I thought of a word an appropriate one oh yeah <laughs> should have remembered that to enter <laughs> for a chance to win a little prize all you have to do is comment on this video I want you to comment with the word milestone that is so that I can then use a fancy tool on the internet <laughs> that I haven't found yet, but I will, to sort out the comments and it will only choose those comments with the word milestone in it. I'll pop that up on the screen for you just so that you know. Um, so what can you win? Well, where's he gone? I made put my tea, no it's not tea, honey and lemon, obviously. It's always honey and lemon, isn't it? I made this little guy, oh, a while ago now. I can't even remember how long ago it was. I think it's since moving in here, so he's probably under a year old, but he might not be. And he has been looking for a forever home ever since, and he hasn't found one. So I thought I would give him away to one of you lovely people. This is not all you will get. However, I can't remember the name of the pattern, by the way, off the top of my head. I will find it out and I will pop it in the description. So if you would like to make your own little penguin, <laughs> you can do. Um, it's a really simple pattern, actually, to work up. It's how many pieces? Two big pieces. So the body is worked as one. And then you make kind of a little jacket that goes over the top. And then the wings are separate and the feet are separate. Um, and then he's got safety eyes, but you could embroider them and a little beak embroidered on. Um, yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, but yes, as well as him, I will put together a little goodie bag of bits and pieces 
I don't know, there might be some chocolate, there might be a couple of tea bags. <laughs> Um, I have got some pin badges knocking around actually and a few other little bits like that that I will slip in for you. So there you go, if you want to win this little lovely little sweet person and a little goodie bag of treats, comment on this video, include the word milestone. You have got until What's the date today? It's the 29th of Feb. I will next be recording. When will I next be recording? I haven't got that written down anywhere. Hang on. Let me look at my calendar. Um, sorry, this is boring, isn't it? I know it will be about two weeks. I just want to make sure I give you the right date. So... Da, 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 da. And uh, so I will next be recording on the 13th of March. So I'm going to give you until the very end of the 12th of March to enter. Um, I will try and remember to put a couple of community posts up to remind you. And I will mention it on Instagram as well for anyone on there. Um, Yes, so until the end of the 12th of March, again, I'll put it all, I'll write it all out and put it in descriptions and comments and posts and all the rest of it, so you've got all the information written down. And then I will draw the name on the 13th before I start recording and I can include the footage of that in my next podcast episode and let you know who's won. So good luck. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we'll see. See you wins next time. Uh, that took longer than I meant it to. <laughs> I'm wittering already. Right, the other thing to quickly mention is that I'm losing my train of thought already because I am not 100% yet. I'm much, much better than I was, but I'm a little bit. <laughs> so I may lose my train of thought even more than usual. Uh, yes, there is a format change again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I keep changing things around. Hopefully this will be the last time for a while. I feel good about this change. Nothing too huge. I'm going to keep all the chatter, sort of life update stuff, until the end, basically. Um, I think that's it. Just a sec. There's going to be a lot of that today. Just <laughs> to ease my throat a little bit. So yes, I'm going to move all the chatter to the end. So, oh, but I will put chapters in the description. So if you are looking for a particular section, you can scroll down, click on, I think it says more, possibly. I think it says more. And you'll find the chapter titles and timestamps in the description. I think you can click on them from there, but if not, it will be in the um, like, this progress bar is not the right word. You know what I mean? Like the, the thing that shows you the length of the video. If you hover over that, it will bring up the chapters. I'm terrible at explaining this kind of thing, aren't I? <laughs> I know what I mean. Uh, so yes, if you're looking for a particular section, you can find it. So let's crack on with finished projects. Now, I've done it again. My first finished, pro finished project is one that I can't actually show you today. This is because it is, this is because it is a new hat for my little niece, Ivy, who is now Oh, I think she'll be four and a half weeks old, I think. No, nearly five weeks. Um, not that I'm obsessed or anything. She's adorable. Um, but yes, we went for lunch with my mum and my sister and Ivy on Saturday last weekend. And so, of course, I have given Ivy her new hat. And she, in fact, wore it on the way home afterwards. So I 
can't show you the actual hat, but I will, as always, put some pictures up for you to have a little look. And let me tell you all about it. I need to find the right notebook and the right page in the right notebook. Is it this one? Here's this one. I love these little notebooks, by the way. Little motivational quotes on the front. It's just a nice little boost every time I look at them. So the hat that I made, let me show you the right one, is the Adelia hat. Adalia. Adelia, I'm not quite sure how you say it. Um, it is by thisstitchinmommy.com. I love this pattern. It worked up, I mean, it's a baby hat, it worked up pretty quickly. You know, I made it in the size naught to three months. So it's only tiny. Um, but yeah, it worked up really, really quickly. It's really pretty. It's got this lovely, um, sort of shell pattern on it, which just, it's just pretty. <laughs> um, and then the ribbing around the bottom is, um, but do you work the ribbing first? I think you work the ribbing first, yeah, and then you just turn it and crochet along the edge of the ribbing and join it. And yeah, so I won't tell you too much more. It's, is it a paid pattern? Mm -hmm. I've not written that down. No, I think it might have been free. I think it was a free pattern. But I won't tell you too much. I shall, again, all the information will be in the description as it always is. Um, the yarn I used is one I have used for a previous hat, which did not fit either. <laughs> it is the Deramore's Studio Baby Soft DK and the colour is 70105 which is marshmallow. Lovely delicate pink. Um, and yeah, it, oh the hat's just beautiful. Did I write anything else down? Oh I added two extra decrease rows at the top um, just to make it cinch in a little bit tighter. Uh, I didn't add a pom-pom or anything like that for this one, um, but I think it would look really good if you did. Uh, the pattern, I believe, is for all sizes from newborn all the way up to an adult large, so you could make matching hats for the whole family, <laughs> should you wish to do so. Um, <laughs> Did I check my gauge? I think I did. And I think, well, I know I used a four millimeter hook. I can't remember if that's what was recommended or not. I think it was actually. And I think I got, I was pretty close to gauge with that. And it used 22 grams of that yarn, which is, I can't read my own writing, 73 meters or 79 yards. So there you go. That is the Adelia hat. It's beautiful. Go and get the pattern and make it. <laughs> uh, right, quick slurp. This mug, by the way, it's a really boring looking mug, but I love it. I've got a bit of strange nostalgia about it. I bought this when I was still working in an office. So it's probably about 10 years old. And yeah, it was my work mug for ages. Um, and it's just, it's a really nice shape. It holds a lot of liquid. So it's good if you want a really big cup of tea or honey and lemon or whatever you might be drinking. It's a good mug. Right, the other finished project that I am going to show you today, I know it's in this. No, because that's the one I've just looked at. <laughs> The notes are in this book. There we go, that's the right page. It's the front cover of this one. <laughs> so, I have it. I thought you might be able to see it, but you can't quite, can you? I have it here. Which way around am I? That's the back. Here we go. 
this is the Diamond Puff, hello, <laughs> Diamond Puff Mile a Minute Blanket by Stitched Up by Emma. This was a pattern test I did for her. And I love it. <laughs> As the name suggests, again, it works up pretty quickly. Um, this will be a paid pattern. I don't know if it's been released yet, but it will be a paid pattern, so I won't give away too many secrets. But as you can see, it uses puff stitches or bobble stitches to create the design. And you work strips in the colours you want and then join them all together. So it works up nice and fast. This is a baby blanket size. I have to stand up, get it all in shot. <coughs> no, I can't get it all in shot, even standing up. How far back do I have to go? There we go. That is a baby blanket. Oh, it's a bit wonky. It has been blocked. You can't tell. <laughs> okay, um, what else was going to say? Yes, I have blocked it, but you can't really tell. <laughs> Even though it's been steam blocked, the edges are still a bit, a bit wonky. I need to sort that out. Uh, once I have sorted that out, this is going to go up in my shop. Um, so you will start again. So you will be able to buy it. Um, all right. What else can I tell you about this? Yes, the pattern is by stitched up by Emma on Instagram. Uh, da, 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 da. I used four completely different yarns, which I don't recommend <laughs> because a part of the reason that the edges are a bit wonky is because my tension is all over the place <laughs> with this blanket. Um, they are all technically DK weight yarns, but as you will know, a DK from one brand is not the same necessarily as a DK from another brand, so some are a bit thicker, um, they're all 100% acrylic, but again, some are softer than others. The edge, I don't know if you can tell actually on camera, but the, the edge and the joining has got sparkle in it. I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> Obviously that makes a difference as well to the overall texture. So the arms that I used were Peter Pan, what's it called? Peter Pan Pixie DK in Selkie, which I think is this one. Oh, that's not, no, there we go, that one. I used Serdar Snuggly DK in Cloud, which will be that one. And then Bellacoco Crochet Luminous DK, DK, <laughs> dear me, in colour 237, which Kelvin describes as sort of like a palm of violet. <laughs> which I think is a pretty good description. And then the edge, I don't know what the edge is, it was in my stash. <laughs> it didn't have a label on it. <clears throat> but it is a DK, just quite a thick DK, that one. I used a four millimetre hook. Um, total amount of yarn. I haven't actually done a total. But the total per strip was well under 100 grams so one skein of each colour would be fine no not per strip per colour used so two strips of each colour was under 100 grams um, and then in fact under 100 grams for all the joining and the border as well so that's nice and it took me a grand total of almost 12 hours to make is bearing in mind it was a test so you know there was a bit of a learning process at the beginning um, but again it actually you know that's quite quick for a blanket really 
and once you get going it's a really intuitive pattern now I'm showing you the front aren't I <laughs> um, yes yes I am just about the bubbles show up better on some strips than others yeah I really love making it I like testing for Emma she's um, she's lovely there's a nice little group we all are very supportive of each other and Emma is very supportive of us as well there we go. <laughs> That's the three colours all at once. Yeah, so hopefully I should be testing again for her in the future. Um, she does lovely blankets. She's got loads. If you have a look on her Instagram or on her website. Um, what else did I make for her in the past? I made the um, basic border blanket, I think it's called which I did as a blanket and then I also did as a, um, a set of table mats I sort of tweaked it slightly mostly just by using different yarn That is all of the finished projects that I have to show you. Not many this week, but a couple, so that's good. So let's move on to works in progress. Uh, all right, now I'll keep that one till the end because I might skip around with sections. No, I won't, but I will keep that one to the end and I'll come back to it. So, works in progress. What shall I start with? I shall do a very quick basic border blanket. No, that's what I've just been talking about. <laughs> this is not the basic border blanket. This is my blanket stitch shawl, which I may change the name of to the blanket stitch wrap because it is more of, more of a wrap than a shawl. I'm not going to go into lots of detail with this, you have seen it before. I'm just going to give you a quick progress update. So, again, the information will be in the description. Last time we spoke, I was down here where that stitch marker is. And I've done a good few rows since. You can see the colour change is happening now. Um, getting into sort of the pinky reds, is it orangey reds? Heading towards red anyway. <laughs> um, I'm still enjoying making this, you know, in little bits and bats, and it's a really good sort of time filler project, as I think I've said before. It's my kind of Sunday evening TV watching project or if I just need something that I can just pick up and work on for a little bit and put down again and not have to think about a pattern or um, changing yarns around or anything like that I can just pick it up crochet for a bit put it down again I am going to move that stitch marker up to the top row as it is at the moment so that next time I can show you whether I've made any more progress so clip that on there there we go that's in place for next time um, that's a crochet society stitch marker by the way can I get it to focus for you I do do very oh. oh dear that didn't work at all try that again <laughs> try that again they do have very very cute stitch markers <laughs> and, I'll pop that. and then in fact i've got another one of theirs on the other the other corner can i get it to show you that one as well possibly Not quite like that, aren't <laughs> There we go. Oh no, now my fingers are in the way. I can 
just about see. Very, very cute stitch markers. Anyway. <laughs> yes, that is my blanket stitch shawl or wrap. It is progressing. Still a lot to do. Slow going. But, you know, that's what I get for making a massive shawl out of fingering weight yarn. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Yes, I will talk about this one next time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a moment of doubt then. I'm just going to quickly show you this bag first. I did show you this last time. And here it is again, full of yarn. And all my other project bits. This is by This Lizzie Sews. Got a little, little label there. I don't know if that'll focus, but I will try. Um. <laughs> Again, I'll put all our information down below. This in here is a very, very special project. I'm just going to touch on incoming briefly with this one as well, <laughs> um, because the yarn is new. Have I got the labels? Handy. Should have. Well, I can't see any. There's one. There they are. So this yarn is. Stylecraft Naturals Bamboo Cotton and I've got the colours Nutmeg and Ecru which are in here <laughs> oh I'm scatty today aren't I ok that's Ecru and this is Nutmeg I am making a very, very special anagurumi for a very special friend. Now, I haven't done a lot yet. This will be the head. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, does it? But, you know, I've only just started. This will be the head. Have I got a good picture that I can show you without showing you all of the pattern? Possibly not, because very deliberately didn't print it all off. Oh. There's one of the face in a bit more detail. Look, I'm making a little beagle. So I have a very, very good friend who used to have a beagle who unfortunately died last year, I believe. Yes, it was last year. Um, and at the time that her dog, Dottie, died. I just so happened to have already found and bought this pattern, uh, which is by... The name has gone right out of my head. It will be in the description. I do know it. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's gone. Um, but yes, I bought it just a few weeks earlier and I thought at the time, oh, I wonder if Kath, my friend, I wonder if she'd like me to make her a little dotty dog. But at the time I thought it was a bit, it was all a bit raw still. I didn't want to ask straight away. But I saw her, oh gosh, a while ago now, a month or two, since Christmas, um, but not recently. <laughs> So within the last couple of months, I've seen her, and I mentioned it to her. It sort of came up in conversation. And I, I just said, oh, look, Kath, you know, feel free to say no. Would you like me to make a little dotty dog for you? I said, yes, yes, I would, please. So that is what I am doing. Um, Teresa something. No, it's not coming to me, but it will be in the description. Uh, <laughs> So yes, I'm making a little a little beagle. It is coming along quite slowly at the moment, but I think that is just because I've been not well this week. So things where I've had to think, I haven't really been happening. <laughs> um, but I have made the head, and I have made one ear, <laughs> um, and I shall carry on. Hopefully next time that will be a finished project that I can show you. 
Okay, I have three more works in progress. Let's go for this one. No, the other one. <laughs> the other one, this one. I don't know if I'll be able to get all of this in shot for you. Let's move that yarn. This is my sacred, sp sacred space blanket, which is again i don't have the name of the designer's hand you know where it'll be um and it was originally released as a crochet along pardon me in eight parts or nine parts yeah eight or nine parts and i think i'm on part seven now it might be six so i'm over halfway <laughs> and i'm really enjoying it i've it hibernated for a while because i was working on other things but i've come back to it recently and i'm loving it assuming that's focused so i'm not going to stand up and try and get it all in shot because i don't think i'll be able to <laughs> But yeah, it starts off as a circle, as the, well, I suppose it's kind of a hexagon really at the beginning. That's the middle. You start in the middle. And obviously the rounds get bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of the stitches are complicated, some of them are really not. I think this last round that went all the way around was about... 600 stitches all the way around <laughs> so it's quite long um i'm now working on the corners sort of to turn it into a square so but they are done separately so i've got lots of ends hanging around at the moment but hey they're getting worked in it's fine <laughs> and yeah i'm still really enjoying it it's a bit more faffy doing the corners separately but I think once they're in place they'll sort of join up and I'll be able to just work in rounds again I think um, the yarn that I'm using for this is I've got it right here or one of them anyway <clears throat> escaped his world in dark grape squish for the gradient so that's all the way from the middle right out to this edge that's all two almost two full cakes which is almost 2,000 meters of scapia's well in dark grape squish and then for the corners because I've almost run out of that and I wanted the corners oh no I already nearly bought another cake of the whirl to work the gradient back out again I've got two cakes of Whirlette in Plum, which is the colour that's designed to go with this. That is blowing out just a bit. I don't know, that's maybe a little lighter than it should be, but it's fairly true. Um, so yeah, I'm using that now. Hopefully I've got two, two of these hoping that will see me to the end but I don't know if it will but hey if not I'll just have to buy more <laughs> we shall see so yes this is another big long-term ongoing project it's not going to be finished anytime soon I will keep giving you updates as and when I work on it let me tuck that back in the bag is this the right bag this is the right bag. <laughs> um, oh, what size hook am I using? What size hook am I using? Is this one? That's not the right one. Three mil. Three millimeter hook. Did I write anything else down? Oh, that's another one of my little notebooks. I think I prefer the other ones, but 
this is still very cute. And more to the point, it's very useful. So yes, oh no, I'm on part six. Currently on round 85, which isn't a full round, it's the corners, but you know what I mean. So there we go, that is that. Two more, two more works in progress to show you. And the next one is another blanket. <laughs> Oh, seems to be all about the blankets at the moment. Um, but this one is being worked in pieces. Oh, how cute is that? I think I've shown you that before as well. A little pouch that I bought from Etsy. If I remember, I'll link the shop for that in the description as well. Uh, right, this is the blanket that I am making for my grandma. I'm just going to pause because Kelvin's in the bathroom. Okay, yes, this is the blanket that I'm making for my grandma who is uh, suffering with dementia and is currently in a care home. It's not going very well at the moment, but that's a different story and I won't go into that. And what I'm doing is I asked my mum which colours would be best and she said blues, greens or purples, nothing too bright. So I went through moustache. <laughs> and found as many blues and greens and purples as I could of a similar weight um, they're all 100% acrylic I'm not going to go through what all the yarns are it's just stuff from my stash um, yeah I might when I've finished it and I write up the notes then I will yeah I'll mention any that are um, well, no, uh, yeah. When I when I finish it and I write up proper notes for the project, I shall talk about all the yarns then. But for now, it's just stash yarn. Um, and what I'm doing is I am making lots of squares or rectangles in different stitches, different patterns. So they're all different textures. This one is just a square of moss stitch. It's coming up quite nicely actually, that's not too... It is maybe blowing out a little, that's better. So some of them are a little bit brighter than I wanted them to be. But I think the overall effect will be roughly what I'm going for. Oh, this is the triplets stitch, which looks very similar to basket weave, but is easier. <laughs> Which is always nice. I've done two swatches of that. Where's the other one? There. Because I did a little one with some yarn that was left from one of the skeins. And I enjoyed it so much that I did another one. <laughs> this was done just last night. I was trying to determine how the colour's coming out. Oh, this is Alpine Stitch, which is... Is that the right way up? I think so. My first time working Alpine, I've heard a lot about it. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, there's quite a lot now. <laughs> Those are all the ones I did last night. What's that? Well, that was an interesting one to do. It's a ripple granny square. Quite like that. Um, again, I think at this stage I'm not going to bother linking patterns, but when it's done I shall write up proper notes it was like oh this one I'm gonna have to do more with this it's a bit of a pain to work up but it looks gorgeous I'm hoping that's gonna focus properly because that's the honeycomb stitch isn't that pretty it's really dense I am thinking that, that would make a really gorgeous handbag or like a little project pouch or something so that is going to get worked again. That will do for now. I'm not going to go through them all. There are lots of patches. And by the end, there will be even more. <clears throat> I don't know exactly how many more I'm going to do. I'm going to keep going. I've got one, two, I've got four more unused skeins of yarn 
well not unused because it's all, all scrap stuff from my stash but unused on this project so far um so i'm going to make as many squares as i can out of those and then i've got some little like really little bits left <laughs> from the other yarns so what i'll do when i finish those excuse me is i will then find some yarn to join them all together work out how i'm going to join them all together because i haven't decided on that yet <laughs> um and yeah lay them all out get them start joining see if it's big enough and go from there i want to get this done fairly soon i've done quite a bit of work on it this week because i think like i mentioned earlier thinking's been hard these are quick <laughs> and relatively simple and you know things like that moss stitch square i know moss stitch i've used it loads so that was nice was that last night i think that was last night and i could just sit and do a bit and not have to think too hard <laughs> which was lovely right final work in progress quick sip of my drink first <clears throat> that is going cold <laughs> it's one no it's another reason why i quite often drink honey and lemon while I'm doing this rather than tea because I don't really mind if it goes cold uh, right yes final work in progress is not crochet but is related <laughs> I am taking part again I did it last year in the 100 days project which is a hashtag on Instagram you may just be able to hear Kelvin in the background he's in a meeting um, what was I saying? They do, I think, have a website as well where you can sign up to receive um, like email prompts and sort of a newsletter and that sort of thing, but it is mostly run on Instagram, I think. Certainly that's where I take part in it. And I have decided this year, I think I did mention it last time, um, to do some spinning making my own yarn. Uh, I have a drop spindle. Um, I may one day get an electric spinner but for now drop spindle I cannot I cannot buy another one. Um, I will just quickly show you. I think last time I showed you the yarn I've been making at that point and I started. No I don't think I'd officially started yet but I've been practicing and having a go. So I have got quite a few bits of kind of scrappy stuff going on. Um, right, I've got the very first, none of this is properly finished, you spin it and then you have to like soak it and a couple of other bits of the process which I have not done for any of this yet. So this is just the initial spun yarn and I am making um, what is usually called fashion yarn and so I've got the core fibre which um, is wool but I'm adding in scraps of leftover yarn from other projects that's my phone sorry um, so it does look a bit messy at the moment but it's getting better that is the first ball that I made um, you can see all the little bits of colour that extra colour worked into it. Is that focusing? Yeah, it's doing okay. Right. Now, last time I was working on this one, I've actually caked this. That is on a white base. Look, you can't really tell because of all the little bits and pieces. That is so much more consistent and thinner, which is what I'm going for. I like thin yarn. And especially because I will probably have to ply this at some point because single ply yarn is not nice to work with necessarily. Um, I'll show you the edges what I want. There you go. Getting more and more consistent. And then about a week ago, maybe a little bit less, I realised I was running out of the white wool <laughs> that I had. 
and so I ordered some more which I will show you properly in incoming in a bit but look at that <laughs> please focus I hope that's focusing because that's just gorgeous I've gone purple all the wool that I bought, in fact it's not all wool, all the fibre that I bought. Um, yeah, all the fibre that I bought is purple. <laughs> that would go brand colours. <laughs> Why not? Um, I'm having so much fun. This is, uh, I'll talk about it more in incoming, but this is a Corriedale wool. 100% Corriedale wool. And, oh it's just lovely. Um, I'm getting more consistent again. My drafting technique is getting better. That's the door. No, that's just that somebody's outside. They're not actually. They don't need me. Someone dropping somebody something off. Um. Oh, where was I? Yes, it's gorgeous to work with. My drafting has improved massively. I will say though that Corriedale good thing that I'd already done a bit of spinning because what's it called I think it's called the staple length which is the individual fibers within the wool I think it must be quite short because this falls apart really easily <laughs> which when you're trying to get nice thin yarn out of it it's been a bit tricky but I'm getting there I'm getting um, a bit more confident with it. Hang on, let me just unwind that. That's a bit thick and thin. Actually, no, that's that's pretty good. I don't know how well that will work with me in the background. But look how beautiful that is. It's not entirely consistent, but I'm not expecting it to be. Um, for one, you know, even mass-produced machine spun yarn there's always a little not always there is often a little bit of variation in the thickness so with hand spun even by an expert which I'm definitely not you'd have to expect a little bit of variation you just would um, and then the fact that I'm adding in extra scraps of yarn alongside the main fiber that's going to affect it so yeah, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy with the progress I'm making. Um, the scraps I'm adding into this one, incidentally, are all from... I don't think I ever showed it on the podcast, but it's on Instagram. It's a big um, granny square temperature blanket that I made for Ned a couple of years ago. Well, I finished it a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, it took me a while to make it. Um, which is all in shades of blue and sort of turquoisey tealy colours. Um, and I kept all the scraps for that because I was already thinking about spinning. I think I might have done a little bit then. And I thought I'll keep all these together because I know all the colours go together. And I thought they went really well with the purple yarn. So that's what I'm adding in. Um, I don't know if I've got enough for the full amount of the purple this particular purple so if not I'll have to find something else <laughs> to carry on adding bits of colour in with oh but I'm loving it I'm really really enjoying doing this um, my aim is to do a little bit every single day um, I think my initial goal was a minimum of five minutes I have massively exceeded that every single day <laughs> um, pardon me that's because I'm having fun. So that is an ongoing thing. I will show you more next time. To pop that to one side for a moment. Another quick drink. And I think yes, I do know what I'm moving on to. Hang on. <clears throat> that is completely cold now. <laughs> like I said, it's a good thing, it's nice. Yes, that's all my works in progress. So next, next cast on.
Now I have got quite a few projects on the go at the moment, so I don't know if I will get any of these because I've got a few options cast on before the next podcast episode or not. I don't know, but these are what's in my head at the moment. When I say cast on, instantly, I know that is usually a knitting term. Not many crocheters use it, but I like it. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I can't think of a better way, sort of any other way of, of saying that you've started a crochet project feels a bit, I don't know, a bit numb. So I'm saying cast on. That's just how I'm, how I'm doing it. Uh, so I've got a few ideas. I was inspired the other day, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, to get back to doing bags. Now, my eventual aim is to make completely from scratch handbags, pouches, project bags, that sort of thing. And I will get there one day. For now, <laughs> um, I don't really have the headspace or the patience or really the motivation to get my sewing machine out and start sewing linings and that sort of thing. I need to do a lot more sewing practice before I um, before I feel confident with that. However, it is possible to buy things like plain cotton zipped pouches, plain cotton tote bags, and so I'm going to buy some and use those as linings and crochet the outside got a few ideas in my head like the honeycomb stitch that I showed you a moment ago and some mosaic crochet patterns would lend themselves brilliantly to this sort of thing um so watch this space it's definitely in my head it's definitely coming I just don't know exactly when <laughs> um on that as well I think I've previously shown you the hessian bags where I've crochet bits to decorate the outside of those um, so I've got a couple of potential ideas for some more of those as well and then I want to make another pair of socks <laughs> uh, this back. yes I showed you last time I think I don't know last time was so chaotic with Ned helping I can't remember what I showed you <laughs> I think I showed you this rather gorgeous skein of yarn which is from Vicky Brown Designs whose logo is there for you um, she is who I get most of my sock yarn from at the moment I have a um, well I think it's just finished actually I did have a subscription <laughs> Uh, for her mini skiing club. But this was a special Valentine's Day yarn that she did. Again, I'm pretty sure I showed you the box last time. I have decided I'm going to wind this up and I'm going to use it to make some socks. Possibly a pair of fingerless gloves as well, or possibly two pairs of socks, we shall see. Um, I just need to find the right pattern. Um, I'm thinking I might look and see if there's a moss stitch pattern because I think this kind of variegation would look lovely in moss stitch. Don't know how practical that is for socks. But it's a nice, quite smooth stitch. It's got a little bit of stretch in it. We'll see, I'll have a look. But yes, that is the other thing that will be cast on at some point soon. I just don't know exactly when. Um, I've got a lot on. I do want to get that blanket for my grandma finished sooner rather than later. So we'll see how I go. Yeah, that's it. That's on the floor. Uh, that is what will be coming up at some point soon. Okay, where have my notes gone? Oh, I have my notes gone. There they are. Oh dear, I do call it chaotic for a reason. 
Oh, okay, on my radar. Nothing to physically show you for this, but pictures popping up in a moment. This is what used to be called my crochet wishlist segment. I've changed it to on my radar because it just feels better, <laughs> basically. Um, oh, sorry, I just had to cut out a coughing fit then. <laughs> um, so mosaic crochet patterns have been popping up all over my Instagram for the past couple of weeks. So I've got three to talk about briefly. Um, the first, it, this will come of absolutely no surprise to you if you have been here before, is by Sixel Design. This is a new pattern. It is her Ank Shawl, which is being released on the 8th of March, which completely coincidentally is mine and Kelvin's wedding anniversary. <laughs> um, we will have been married for 10 years this year. So if anybody fancies buying me a present, <laughs> um, I am joking, I am joking. But yes, it's another gorgeous pattern. What can I say? You know, Alexis, I don't know. I think we must share some brainwaves somewhere because almost every pattern she comes out with, I just adore. They're all lovely. There's the odd one that isn't quite up my street but the vast majority are perfect. <laughs> so this is another one that I will buy at some point. Whether or not I will use it to make a shawl as she has, I don't know, but it will get used for something. Okay, pattern number two is from Cindy Bird, who is Cindy Birdsong on Instagram and she is running a crochet along at the moment. This is her garden life cowl and it looks lovely. I'm gonna pause again. Okay, I'm back. That was Kelvin going to the bathroom again. <laughs> you don't wanna hear. <laughs> the bathroom is just through that wall, so anything that happens in there you can hear in here. Uh, um, yes, the garden life crochet along looks amazing. <laughs> basically. I wish I had time for another big project, I really do, um, for this one and for the next one I'm about to mention because they just look lovely. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Really there's this one in particular actually, I can think of two or three, maybe four people <laughs> in my life who I could easily make something for with this. So I may revisit this one at some point. Excuse me. Mm. Okay, number three is from Crochet Hooks and Magic. Uh, who I think again, I think this is, words. I think all three of these designers are people I've mentioned before on this podcast, actually. Um, I do follow them all on Instagram, so yeah, they come up fairly frequently on my feed and I like their work, so. Yes, I'll try and be a bit more varied in the future. <laughs> um, this is another crochet along that is running at the moment. This is the Magic Fountain. And again, it just looks gorgeous. I've seen the promotional pattern and pictures over the last couple of weeks and it just looks lovely. This is worked in the round, which, which so I've worked in the round as in you do rows that are all the same length but like to make a cushion cover or a bag or something you just work round in a circle. This is worked in the round in the same way that the sacred space that I showed earlier is so you start in the middle and you're working outwards so it gets bigger. I have not done that with mosaic crochet before so it's blowing my mind a little bit <laughs> to see these amazing patterns that um, oh, what's the name? I can't remember. The designer is coming up with. <laughs> um, they're just beautiful. I am going to have to have a go at some point because I love mosaic crochet, as you will already know. And to be able to work it in the round like that, that's a skill I would like to have. Uh, right, the final thing on my radar is 
Um, this is something I have discovered just in the last couple of weeks. Again, through Instagram, it's just popped up. Um, and this is the Curate Crochet Box. This is a subscription box. I think it's monthly. I don't know too much about it. I've done a little bit of a look on the website. Um, as far as I know, they are an independent small business, UK based, I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and the boxes look lovely. The recent one is what's inspired me to start making more bags because the pattern in the current box is for a bag and it just looked lovely and they have used the um you know a plain tote bag is being used as the lining that's included in the box um i'm trying to not subscribe to anything new <laughs> at the moment because cash is low um in fact yeah i think my vicky brown one has just finished and I have cancelled my Crochet Society one. Uh, I've got a few more boxes to come. One which I think might arrive today or tomorrow, in fact. Um, and they were both paid up in advance for a year, but still. I want to go for a while without, I think, partly for money <laughs> um, reasons, but partly because I've got a huge amount of yarn. I don't need any more <laughs> and more to the point I don't need any more that I don't have specific plans for I'm trying at the moment to only buy yarn that I have specific plans for when I show you the incoming in a minute <laughs> I'm gonna have to eat those words <laughs> um, but that's what I'm trying to do so I don't know. It's very, very tempting. There's another one actually that I've forgotten to write down that has also come up on my feed that is also very tempting. <laughs> um, but I might, I might just have to wait. I might just have to leave them for now and just keep an eye on them. But yes, that is what is on my radar at the moment. More next time. And now, as promised, on to incoming. What have I got? three lots what shall I start with three lots of incoming right I shall start with the two that I've briefly mentioned already as well as the coughing fits I'm really gassy today <laughs> I don't know what's going on and there's going to be a lot of editing for me to do later uh, so I mentioned when I was talking about Dotty in my works in progress that the yarn for that was new I bought that from uh, Wool Warehouse, which is one of the places I get a lot of my yarn from. They have a threshold for free shipping. It's £25, £30. I think it changes every now and then. I think it was £30. The yarn I needed for Dotty was not £30. <laughs> so, did I think, oh, well, never mind, I'll just pay the shipping fee? Of course I didn't. <laughs> of course I didn't. I thought, let's buy more yarn. So I went looking and I always try to get a decent amount for my money. I try to buy good yarn, but something that's not too expensive and something that I'm genuinely interested by. I'm not just going to get, you know, a bunch of white cotton or something because that's not, you know, yes, I'd use it eventually, but it's not something I'm going to look forward to using. And so I went looking. And I happened across, ignore the white bit at the top, that's just me writing, Rowan, which is a brand I've heard of before, Soft Yak. This is DK weight, they're 50 gram balls. I have heard a lot about Yak yarn in the recent, very recent times, a few months, last few months, maybe six months. And I've been intrigued by it. <laughs> So I saw this and thought, hello. Um, I've got four colours. This is Submarine. 
and this one is pasture and then we've got black and we have got Lee possibly Lea L-E-A such lovely colours look how good they look together as well can I get all four at once? yes I can I have two hands oh I don't know what I'm gonna don't know if I will use them all together or separately I just really like them <laughs> I like the fact that the colours are rich and a little bit moody <laughs> you know deep and dark and mysterious that is something I've heard about a lot when it comes to yak based yarn and actually the percentage of yak is pretty low in these 50 gram balls hang on it, they are is that 70 or 76 I might say 76 percent cotton <laughs> and then 15 percent yak and 9 percent nylon you do the maths, see whether that adds up to 100. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, the percentage of yak is very, very low, but you still get that lovely depth of colour that yak based yarn is renowned for. So, yeah, any ideas? What should, I, what should I make? What should I use it for? Should I team it with something else? Should I use them all together? Should I make, I don't know, 50 gram balls? four individual pairs of very short fingerless gloves <laughs> um, I don't know I don't know what to do I've just got more yarn for my stash I have a problem I've said it before and I will say it again uh, right the other incoming is the floof for this so I mentioned already that the stuff I'm using at the moment is Corridale Oh, let me show you where it's all from first. Where's the card gone? Hang on. There it is. So this is from you know, World of Wool. That's all the information. I will pop it down in the description for you as well. Is that focusing? Maybe. But if you want to just take a screenshot of that, if that's easier for you, then that's that for you. So we have 100 grams of Corriedale in Damson, which is what I'm using at the moment. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So fluffy. And the one I'm using at the moment. Keep that there. Not that one yet. I can do both the walls. I've got two walls and two not walls. Got some Shetland. 100 grams of Shetland in aubergine, which feels quite different. It's a bit um, doesn't feel quite as smooth as the Corriedale. So it'll be interesting to see what that feels like when I get around to uh, spinning with it. So, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> no, I won't get through it all that quickly. And then I've got two that I was just really intrigued by. This, I don't know what they're going to be like to work with. <laughs> but we'll find out. This is a, it's called Bio Nylon. Label, there you go, in plum. So again, that's 100 grams of each of them. And that is, oh, that's gonna be so smooth. It's gonna be so smooth. Um, I don't know what it's gonna be like to spin, but I'm gonna have fun trying. <laughs> we shall figure that out. Um, and then the last one, which is, sorry, this is all a bit rustly, isn't it? Um, oh, this is the one, the colour isn't 
quite there for me but it's still purple and I couldn't resist this this is some dyed bamboo I really like bamboo yarn it's quite often expensive for the amount you get but oh, this is gonna be beautiful just again I don't know what it would be like to spin with look at that fluff coming off it I have a feeling it might be quite slippery because bamboo yarn can be but that is just what colour is that? oh it's called Francesca um, yeah sort of silvery silvery greyish purple so we shall see I'm going to have fun I'll show you all of those as I go along um, and yeah show you how I get on with spinning them uh, right one more bit of incoming which I screwed all the way at the back this is my last Vicky Brown's mini skin club box I haven't opened it yet I thought as I think it's the last one I'm getting anyway um what are we in we're in Feb and yeah I signed up Feb last year but I think the first box I got was March and it was for 12 months so this should be the last one I thought because it's the last one I'll open it with you <laughs> so this has not been opened I don't know what the color is um it should be a good follow-on from last month's box the January box but I've put all that yarn away and I can't remember what it looked like so <laughs> um oh and I can't I can never get in to these without completely destroying them because right Vicky if you're watching stop sticking the label over the bit where you open the box <laughs> it's a bugbear I have loads of companies do it and I get why, you know, it keeps things secure and everything. But then it makes it really hard to open them. Just stick it off to one side or around the edge or something. There we go. Lovely black tissue paper with her sticker. I'm a bit sad that it's my last box. Look at those colours though, those are good colours to end on. Very pretty. Very pretty. I'm not going to get them all out, I'm going to leave them in there for now. I'll show you those again. Look at those. Oh, her colours are so good. Always. Oh, yes, I am a bit sad that it's my last box, but. I can't afford to sign up again at the moment <clears throat> and I have got still most of a year's worth of my subscription boxes two three lucky dip mini skiing bags all of the advent calendar that I got from her and then some bits of sock yarn from a couple of other um, dyers as well. I've got plenty of sock yarn at the moment. I do not need more. And I cannot afford to be tied into a subscription. So yes, a little bit sad, but hey, what a box to end on. Gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Um, and that is all the incoming. Not too much this time. Okay, so chatter time. <laughs> Um, ooh, my chair's wobbly. <laughs> I shouldn't sit like that. Uh, so, what can I tell you? I've been ill. <laughs> That's yeah, thrilling. I've seen Ivy. I've already mentioned that. Uh, da, 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 da. What else? What else? What else? Oh, did I say last time? I think I might have mentioned it briefly. That I have booked a venue for organising my own craft market again. It's in June. It's the 8th 
6th of June, I think. It might be the 9th. I keep getting confused. <laughs> um, it's a Saturday. <laughs> I know that much. It's either the 8th or the 9th of June and it's a Saturday. Um, I have booked the Wesley Chapel, which is right in the centre of Harrogate. It's a fantastic location. Really, really happy about the location. Um, there will be lots of foot traffic, even if it's throwing it down, to be honest, there'll be plenty of foot traffic on the day. Uh, obviously I'm hoping for good weather, but <laughs> but you can't control that, can you? Um, I can fit, what was the number I, I think I can fit comfortably 22 stalls in. I might be able to squeeze in a couple more. And the kitchen for the venue is, you have to walk past it to get from the door, you know, the front doors into the hall. So I have got a vendor who I think is happy, I have discussed it with him, <laughs> to do, um, he does um, savoury food and sweet treats. But I've asked him if he'll do teas and coffees as well so that anyone coming in can go and get a tea and a coffee and a snack, tea or a coffee and a snack, both, why not? Um, and, you know, hopefully that will pull a few more people in. And even if it doesn't, the people who do come in will have a nice time. Um, so that will be, that will be lovely. I haven't sent the form out to many people yet, I will. Excuse me. I'm going to send it first of all to everyone who attended the craft fair that I did in October last year because uh, I know they're all great and <laughs> I worked really well with them uh, and then I've got a few people who I couldn't fit in last time who sort of second wave I'll send it out to them and then how, if I've got any spaces left after that I shall pop it out on and yeah, there's a few Facebook groups and that sort of thing um, to see who else will come along. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, the the fee for the venue hire is is higher than the venue I used last time, but I can still because I can fit more people in it. I don't have to charge my vendors too much more. I mean, percentage-wise, it's a big increase, but I'm, let's be transparent, I'm charging £25 for a store <clears throat> for my vendors, which for a full day at a good venue, that's not bad. I've paid more than that, I think, for every single market that I've signed up to for this year so far. And I think the ones I did last year were more than that as well, so it's not unreasonable. And again being com completely transparent I will be making a profit charging that so which is the aim <laughs> you know this is a business <laughs> um, and some of that money I will use for um, equipment or supplies or a bit of marketing maybe although hopefully not too much of that because of where it is but yes that's exciting <laughs> Uh, what else I've got to talk about? Da, 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 da. I talked about Leeds last time. Yes, you saw the footage. In fact, have I mentioned on here, specifically on my podcast videos, that I am also doing monthly vlogs? Um, there's only one up so far, which is for January. Um, I need to do a little video today to finish off Feb and then that will go up in the next few days, probably after this. Excuse me. I've run out of honey and lemon now and my throat is going. <laughs> um, yeah, so check those out if you want. <laughs> um, I am, so far I've done, I've done all of January as one video, all of Feb will be one video. I think going forward, I'm gonna break it up a bit more because they're long and it means that anything I talk about at the beginning of the month is wildly out of date by the time the video <laughs> comes out. So I think, I don't know, we'll see how I go in March, see what happens. 
but yes that's something else for you to look at if you want to what else has happened recently um da, 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 da. not a lot really so it's more what's coming up um i'm going to Lindsay's on friday it's the first time this year we were supposed to go last week but then kelvin wasn't very well and i needed to stay home which is fine i was disappointed i'll be honest but kelvin needed me you know my family needed me it's fine i'm going tomorrow <laughs> i can't wait so excited um yeah through one thing and another yeah lindsay's been ill with that like 100 day cold thing she caught it at christmas and it hasn't lasted 100 days quite but you know she got a chest infection and everything and yeah that put a um a damper on our plans for a while um so yeah that should be good <laughs> it should be good i'm just really really looking forward to it um also before i next speak to you as i have briefly mentioned our wedding anniversary is coming up um it will be our 10th which is mad <laughs> but then i stop and think and go oh yeah well ned's nearly eight so <laughs> yeah that does make sense actually but it's crazy 10 years of marriage you know we've been together nearly 16 i think oh how young we were <laughs> um but yeah anyway we're gonna have a big party well hopefully a big party i would keeping it very very casual because i don't want to get stressed about the organization so we have sent out an invitation to anyone who we would like to come if they can come great if they can't eh. <laughs> never mind um if it ends up with two people okay we'll still have a nice time um we've said bring your own booze just to keep costs down and we'll get a bunch of pieces in you know yeah so that's not this weekend i think it's the one after christ um so i need to tidy up downstairs <laughs> um, otherwise yeah it's gonna be a bit mad um i think some of ned's friends are coming so that'll be lovely talking of tidying up downstairs we are um progressing with plans for the renovation of downstairs um the application for planning permission has now been submitted so it's a little bit real now <laughs> um obviously it could be a few weeks well at least a few weeks before that gets approved but we're pretty hopeful that it will be because other houses nearby including some of our neighbours have done similar things in the past so it shouldn't be an issue we just need to wait for it to go through <clears throat> and then we need to find builders and all of that stuff but we have um, the architect that we've got in will help <laughs> with all of that obviously we're paying him to but he will help with all of that so hopefully it'll go fairly smoothly um oh, time's getting on i need to crack on what else is coming up mother's day same weekend as our wedding anniversary <laughs> that's worked out quite nicely so um oh i think i said before i was trying to get some ideas and make some products for mother's day gifts and that sort of thing i've sacked all of that off <laughs> um i'm rethinking my business plan it's really not that structured but for want of a better term um and my strategy for market stalls at the moment um i hate building up stock and making the same thing over and over again lots of little projects that are all the same it just it doesn't do it for me i want small projects fine but that that are one-offs 
held into the meeting again, if you can hear him. He's got a lot of meetings today, bless him. Um, or, yeah, but I like big projects. I like one-off projects and things that I enjoy making. So I'm going to focus more on, well, I don't know precisely what, but things like bags and blankets and shawls and hats and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and I will get, you know, lots of lovely pictures and have samples that I can take to markets. Um, but it will be very much, uh, I have these products and you can buy this product, but treating them more as, like my market store will kind of be more like a mini showroom. Um, and uh, this is the kind of thing I make. Here's how you commission something. <laughs> um, because I, I want to, I need to enjoy this. Yes. I want it to make money, of course I do, <laughs> but I need to enjoy it otherwise, you know, I picked this up as a hobby, crochet started as a hobby for me, and it is still a hobby alongside the business, <laughs> and so I need it to remain enjoyable. Um, so yes, I won't be doing much in terms of seasonal products. I'll do the odd bit, like I will still make pumpkins at Halloween <laughs> and I will still make baubles for Christmas and that sort of thing but the rest of the year unless something comes to me I'm not going to stress about it, I'm not going to set out with oh god it's Valentine's Day soon I need to make you know 85 heart butt plugs <laughs> or something like that because that's just not how I like to do things. <laughs> that said if you want a heart bookmark or key ring or other small thing let me know and I will have listings in my shop at some point and I will have um sort of listing listings for commissions kind of it will become clear in the future I've got some work to do with my website and possibly with my Kofi account to set that up so that getting so that commissioning things is a bit easier for people. Um, obviously there's the option of you've got your own idea and tell me about it and we'll see what we can do. But also I'd like to have options on my website or on Kofi or in my shop or wherever of I like this blanket but I want it in different colours or that sort of thing. Anyway. That was far more detail than I meant to go into. <laughs> and I really, really do need to stop talking soon because um, because I have got a hospital appointment this afternoon. Um, I mentioned right at the beginning that I am visually impaired. Um, this has been the case for years now. I have a degenerative condition called comb dystrophy. Um, if I remember I'll put a link to some information in the description if you want to know more about it. Um, but for the fast... <laughs> where's it going? Going too fast, slow down. Um, for the past few weeks there has been a new symptom. Um, it is almost certainly just that the deterioration has crossed another threshold I suppose for want of a better way of explaining it um, I saw my private ophthalmologist who does all my you know, routine eye tests and sorts my glasses out and stuff I saw her last week and she said yeah it's probably nothing alarming just how things are going to go which is alarming enough but you know, there's nothing it's like there isn't a new disease or anything like that that she can see um but it is worth getting checked out by the hospital as well so i will be going to york i need to leave here just after 12. um my appointment is not until 10 to 2 but i am getting there via public transport because kelvin has to work um 
and you know they've got me in really quickly so I'm not this isn't me complaining at all but just yes my entire afternoon basically is going to be in hospital um and I will take some crochet with me I think if I can find something easy but there's a very 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 strong probability that they are going to put drops in my eyes that um, artificially dilate my pupils so that they can see into the back of my eye more easily um, and once that's done once your pupils are permanently dilated well, not permanently but you know, <laughs> for a long time you can't then focus on anything <laughs> so if they do do that which they probably will I won't be able to crochet <laughs> because <laughs> I don't have anything I don't have anything with chunky enough yarn <laughs> to be able to see it sorry I've got an itch um, a bit of dry skin I hope that wasn't too visible for the entire previous hour and a bit uh, <laughs> what was I saying <laughs> yes so I will probably be very bored I'm going to take obviously my phone and my headphones and my battery bag <laughs> and pop some podcasts on I think because otherwise I'm going to be very very bored I don't know how long I will be there for it depends how busy they are um, but yes that's why I'm do you actually need to get on <laughs> I am on a deadline today have I covered everything I think I have on that respect the only other small thing if you don't want to hear about this bit just skip on to the next chapter um, I am just going to briefly talk about my weight loss journey I hate that word but I don't know what else to say <laughs> um, there's not a lot to tell you to be honest I am almost exactly the same weight as I was last time and the time before and the time before <laughs> things have stagnated a bit lately but I am happy that it isn't going up excuse me um, yeah that's a really good thing obviously going down would be better but stable is fine especially because I am really struggling with food at the moment I don't know what is going on um, I don't know if I just let myself slip a bit too much at Christmas and pulling myself back is tricky obviously January was a tricky month mentally I've been ill recently hormones oh who knows um but i'm okay i'm doing okay and i will get back on track i will <laughs> and the weight will drop again it will and to be fair yes it's stable and i'd love it to be going down but i am at the lightest i've been at in probably over a decade so that is really cool Right, last little bit. It is the end of the month. Which means tomorrow is the beginning of a new month. That is how time works. Uh, so, I am going to, hopefully very quickly, <laughs> do a review of my February goals. I nearly said January then. <laughs> February goals. And tell you what I've got planned for March. So, I had said in Feb I was going to organise my craft room. I have done some organising. <laughs> it is slightly tidier behind me than it was last time. <laughs> so, I'm counting that as done, because I have done some. I wanted to continue with the cosy blanket make along. I've done that, I've been making blankets, and I have posted about them once since last time I spoke to you <laughs> so that's done um, I wanted to do the Mother's Day items and some market stock I've just talked about that binned that one that was easy <laughs> I wanted to continue with the blanket for my grandma I've shown you that I'm making really good progress uh, what does that say oh socks I showed you last time I think didn't I the Watson waffle socks that I'd made so that's done I wanted to finish two older projects, didn't talk about those, 
why didn't I talk about those? Well, because they're really little. One of those, it will be in my monthly vlog if you want to show them. Oh, words, if you want to see more about them. Uh, there was a tea towel that I had very, very, very nearly finished. I literally needed to weave in ends and make a hanging loop for it. Why had I not done that? I've done that now. <laughs> it is in fact in the wash downstairs because we've used it this week. Um, and then there was a turtle amigurumi that really only needed a face. But then I picked it back up and was looking at it and trying to sort of face out and realised its neck was really floppy. Like, mm. when I tried to firm it up a bit and it just wasn't working. I wasn't in love with it. The colours aren't really me. I love turtles. I would definitely make another turtle at some point. But the colours were not really my jam. So I frogged it. It's done. The, um, the yarn from it is in my scrap yarn boxes up there behind you. And the stuffing is in fact in that project bag for Dottie. So it's being used for her. So it's all being reused. Um, I haven't thrown anything away but that project is out of my work in progress hibernation station over there behind me that side um, which is what I was aiming for so that's great I have two older projects are gone all done and finally I wanted to add content to my website I have not done that <laughs> I have not touched my website in too long and I need to I really really need to so March goals <laughs> March goals get on my website <laughs> and specifically I've been more specific I want to update the gallery um, because you know I've got lots of lovely pictures I can add and, and projects I can put on there I want to add some kind of like news feed type thing onto it. I don't quite know how that will work but I'm sure I can figure something out um, just to kind of what am I up to, what am I making, how's life kind of thing um, and I want to put an events tab on there as well so I can obviously add market dates and that sort of thing, giveaways, yeah similar things so that's my website goals also, oh, I've mentioned already in the chat a bit about um, getting things like this blanket, which I'm leaning on, on my shop and sorting out a way of um, getting the commissions options on there as well, or on my website or however. Um, da, 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 I want to make serious progress on the blanket for my grandma. In fact, a whole month. I reckon I can finish that by the end of March. That's a bold statement. I can. Whether or not I will is a different matter. But I should. She needs to have it. Um, I want to finish Dottie. Get that to Kath. I want to finish another old project still got I mean there's loads of stuff in the hibernation station but there are specifically some things that are nearly finished I want to shift another one of those get it out and either finish it or frog it one or the other and I want to organize the craft room some more <laughs> because yes it's better than it was but there's still a lot of clutter behind me. There's still clutter down here. There's still clutter over there. There's, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of just stuff everywhere. I mean, the whole house is like that, to be honest. I, we all are. I'm not a hoarder yet. I am determined to never become one, but it's a fine line. I can, yeah, there's, there's danger signs, there's definitely danger signs. I am a collector and I try not to be. And it's fine if I'm collecting things deliberately, you know, yarn, but it's all the other random tat that mounts up everywhere. Serious decluttering has been needed for years, 
quite frankly. Um. Hello again. It's Jenny from the future. This lovely box arrived just after I'd finished recording the podcast. So I thought it would be nice to open it for you and have a look inside. This is Crochet Society subscription box number 47. If you don't want to see inside, if you're a subscriber and you've not had your box yet, or you just want to wait, um, you can skip ahead using the chapters. They are listed in the description and you should be able to click uh, just anywhere on the um, like the progress bar of the video as well and that should show you uh, the next chapter. So if you don't want to see it, skip ahead now. Okay, let's open this up and have a look inside. I have opened it. I opened it yesterday. Um, just have a quick look, but I've not been all the way through it. So yes, let's have a look. I love that noise. <laughs> Velcro boxes. Da -da 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 -da. It says on the inside, can I get that in shot? No. No, I can't. Not easily. If I turn it around, I can, but then it's upside down for you, isn't it? So inside the lid, it says off the hook. <laughs> and this box is literally exploding. It is so full. So we have a nice big cloud of fibre film, which is lovely. So I'm assuming there's going to be at least one amigurumi pattern in here. I don't know yet, I haven't looked at the patterns. <clears throat> but hey, stuffing is always useful. And yet, yeah, cloudy and gorgeous. <laughs> this is interesting. It's like a little basket, I guess. It's got elasticated sides which come apart. I don't know what this is for. Uh, I think it's made of just felt quite stiff felt. So that's intriguing. Let's see what that ends up for. Ah, it's a fluffy pom-pom pen. Anyone else grew up in the 90s and early 2000s? You almost certainly had a pen like this. <laughs> Do you remember the like flamingo ones that had like a really big bubble and then like a neck and another little bubble for a head and oh they were super fluffy i love those i had quite a few <clears throat> there is a zip <clears throat> not a particularly long one but that's okay seems like a reasonable quality as far as i can tell there is i think that is some um, embroidery thread, a couple of different colours. That's quite cute. So that's always nice. There is, of course, the themed crochet hook for this box. Is that focusing? Not especially. I'll turn it around anyway. It's a four millimeter hook. Nice pattern on the handle. Why won't that focus for you? I promise it's a 4 mil one. <laughs> nice little checkered pattern. And there is, of course, the themed stitch marker as well to go with. Oops. Cute little daisy. I think this is all about um, sort of spring vibes for that time of year. We're now into the yarn. Look at this. So we have got six skeins. They are. How much are they? It doesn't actually say, as far as I can see, how um, how much each ball weighs. I'm guessing these are 50 grams. They look like a 50 gram skein. So there's Crochet Society Charmed DK, which I don't think I've had before. It's a DK weight, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. 
don't know if that's focused, I hope it can. Um, yeah, we've got six skeins. The writing on this is so small. I can't read what that says, that's the colour name. Oh, that's way too easy. Topanga? Topanga, possibly. It's not a word I know. Um, and then we have... Oh, another one that I'm going to have to get on the camera to read it. It's not that focus. Oops. There we go. Oh, Angelica. Nice colour. I like Angelica. If you have a taste of it, I think it's lovely. This is a really nice colour. Dana? I think that says Dana. Are these are all um, names, maybe. Oh, Angelica's a food. That's what I was going with a moment ago. It's a plant you can eat. <coughs> I think these are maybe just uh, names. I think that one says Sabina, Sabrina. Sabrina. <laughs> oh, it's tricky sometimes. I do you wish they'd just make the names a bit bigger? Oh, Blossom. Oh, maybe these are TV characters. I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Oh, and Clarissa. I think they might be, you know, I think they might be named after TV characters. <coughs> Certainly three of those are ones that I recognise. And then we've got all of this. Uh, I don't normally get this much stuff. So we have got do this first. Uh, oh, notepad. That's cute. What does it say on it? So we've got oh, it's a pattern pattern notes pad. So we've got pattern pattern name and what size you're making. A general notes section. Mm. Progress, track a, you sort of do how many rows you've done or whatever else you need to keep track of what you're doing. Uh, a little bit for the yarn, your hook, all of that sort of thing. And at the bottom, a little, a little doodle space. Um, there are loads of pages. I'm assuming they're all the same. Yes. So that will be very useful. And then we have two books. We've got the mini magazine and we have this extra one. So I'm going to do the extra one first, I think. So this is the pocketbook of adorable animals. Very, very cute. 52 mix and match pieces to make. So let's have a little look. Okay, there's a bit on how to use this book. Oh! there. Like the witchy cat, that's cool. <laughs> Easter bunny. Is that one a, oh, a rhino. It's got a horn. Oh. Red panda and a unicorn, I think. dog with a Christmas hat and a monkey. I've got to admit I'm not keen on monkeys but hey never mind. Mm. 
lion and is that a bear possibly in different colors that's cool oh and now wow, okay so i've obviously not read through so each is in little sections so there's a section there's a page on heads this is very much um reminding me of body body page um the edwards menagerie books there's like a sort of a series of them by toft um well not by toft by the, the designer who's behind toft what's her name carrie carrie ann something i think or carrie um there's a monster book <laughs> limbs that's cool which is you can mix and match all the body parts hmm. do you know this uh, oh and then there's a hippo instructions there's the cat rabbit Rhino. Didn't even notice there was a hippo actually. Panda. It's a red panda specifically. Uh, unicorn. Dog. Probably shouldn't really be showing you the pattern, but never mind. Monkey. I'm only doing it very quickly. Accessories. Generic celebration accessories, birthdays and such. Easter accessories. <laughs> Beach day accessories. And Christmas accessories. It's a really cool little book. Book. I like it. Very handy. And that front cover is just lovely. Hmm. So again, that'll be useful. Right, mini magazine. I've got everything else out of the box. So beautiful front cover, as always. You get your welcome page. Here's this. Curated by Natasha Emerson. Today. Ooh, the intro is by Kate Happel still, though I thought she left, but that must be a rumour. Because that intro is still written by her. That's the contents page. <coughs> and we are straight into the first pattern. Ooh. This is the Chillax pouch. That looks cool. Very useful, something I might have a go at making. I won't show you the patterns for these ones. Oh, and you get a little um, explanation of what's in the box, which is always useful. There's a little tutorial here on how to do a certain stitch. The felt thing is a little travel basket. Travel tray. This fabulous felt tray folds flat for easy travel. Yeah, pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, there's a Care Bear. The official Care Bear's pattern. Share Bear. I think this is the Care Bear that Ned's got. Although his is more purple than that, that, that picture. That's very cool. I might have to make that. Maybe I'll make one for Ivy. It's a little bit all about Natasha Emerson. Here's the designer behind these. Intro, she is Love Indie on Instagram. There at the bottom. Oh, pattern again, off the hook. Granny Square bag. Project bag. It's got a nice, uh, nice shape to it. 
that's a big project for alternative yarns so that's always good because that is crochet society exclusive yarn that's been included again so nice to see some extra options have i used any of these uh, i don't think i have actually i have not yet so they'll be fun to explore oh and then just a little extra some little motifs to make we love the 90s motifs <laughs> A bit fun. Just little bits and pieces, good for using up scrap yarn, things like that. Oh, and then there's always a your makes page at the back. Look at those things that other people have made. Just check that I'm not featured. I don't think I am. <laughs> no, I'm not. I quite often forget to do the tag on Instagram. To be fair. Oh, somebody else's version of the flower power blanket that I'm very slowly making. It's a nice idea that one. I like it. Oh and then you get a sneak peek of the cover of the next box. That's very pretty. So like I said the other day I did um, I have cancelled my subscription now just for cost reasons and the fact that I already have a massive stash of yarn. I really don't need more but I do have this this is 47 i think i've got two more boxes that are included in the subscription that because i paid for a year up front so i will have two more to share with you so i think it said it goes up to box 49 so that's two more boxes um i'm just gonna fold this flat flat see doorbell I think that's actually just Kelvin going out to um, check the post box really fold me flat on that but there you go if I do that maybe uh, so yes we'll have a couple more boxes I can show you in the coming months there every two months the boxes so it'll be a little while to the next one but there you go I hope that was interesting right that's it I need to get a shift on I've got a couple of emails to check and reply to you and then I need to get oh, I'll have a quick lunch I think early lunch and get ready to go off to York and have bright lights shone in my eyes yay <laughs> I hope that you are having a better day than I am about to and yeah just that life's going well for you if it isn't I'm sorry I wish I could help. As always, please do. If you well, no, you know what? I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to beg this time. But if you feel like it, subscribe, like the video, drop me a comment. In fact, do drop me a comment. Remember, drop me a comment, and you could win this little guy. Isn't he cute? And other bits and pieces as well. Um, exactly what is in the goodie bag will depend partly on who wins. Um, if you are a crocheter or crafter in general then there are a few bits that I will put in if you are not I will put different bits in <laughs> so I'll work that out when I've chosen the winner and spoken to whoever the winner is and once that's all sorted I will take a picture of the contents of the goodie bag and once the winner has received it I will share that on here or on Instagram or both. Right, that's it. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.